Hello, everyone. Welcome to my show. I'm David, and this is David's Kitchen. We've got uh, a beautiful assembly here. Uh, something that you can make from your own kitchen with ingredients that you can store. And I'll explain all that in a second. $5 for five meals. That's pretty good for a big meal for everybody. Uh, the, the basis for this movie, this video that I'm doing here, is a 99 cent bag of red potatoes that have virtually gone bad. And I don't mean bad as an unedible. I mean, ready to blossom. They're still edible. And I was going to plant these, but I don't think I really want to plant them. I, I want to just eat them. So I'm going to take these, uh, these little things off the top of these red potatoes. And I am going to get a container of water boiling. It doesn't have to be all over the potatoes, because that takes a while to start. But I'm going to start up by getting a little bit of water for my filter here. Oh, wow, I thought I cleaned that out. That was from the pasta the other day. Make sure you have a clean pan when, when filling with water. Okay. All right, I am going to go ahead and fill this up with water. I would say about one third full. Uh, celery works well, yeah. Celery is a natural salt enhancement. And I've got some celery. I'll show you what I have in just a second. The potatoes were a really deal, a big deal. I think they, they put them out there because I think they put them out there because the uh, the potatoes were ready to go. They were ready to start, you know, blossom. Yeah, I'm gonna put that on the front burner on level six. Get the get the water going really well. I am going to salt the water. Now, I I got to tell you, I, I didn't think this would work. And the story behind this, this dinner is I had some guests coming over, family members of Sarah's, and I didn't have anything in the cupboard to eat. I made this the other day. See, these things have to come off. You can just take them off with a knife. You can just pare them off, like right there. I didn't think that uh, I would be able to feed everyone, and then I realized, well, I've got, I've got canned chicken that I picked up at Costco for two dollars a can, and uh, this is the chicken breast that they sell for about two dollars a can. And you can get these on sale for $2, but generally they're about $2.50 right now if you were to replace something like that at Walmart. So, yeah. And I, I knew that I had an onion and I had some sweet potatoes sitting around. And the nice thing about sweet potatoes is they stay a long time in the bag. And these are not nightshade vegetables like potatoes are. They're more of a root crop. I'm going to take about three little potatoes out of this bag, which is sitting around. And that's actually flavor. That's going to give a dimension of flavor to this meal. Now, I normally wouldn't think that this would all work out. And then I, I realized, well, you know, I've got some cauliflower, I've got some celery, I've got some carrots I can throw in there. Carrots kind of add them to the mix. I'm gonna throw these some, I'm not even using half of this bag of potatoes, just about 50 cents worth of potatoes. So I'm up to about $3 in expense right now with just the potatoes and the chicken. Now, again, you can expand out and have more potatoes. I'm using red potatoes because you don't need to peel them. You just need to make sure they're clean because red potatoes tend to be a edible skin. Let me see how many of these potatoes I can eat. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to leave 
these three potatoes to plant in the garden. And when you plant them, you can cut them in half, like right there, and then you can put this piece on one side and another piece that's flowering on the other side, and they'll still grow into full potatoes. So I think I'm gonna keep three for the garden. All right. I'm rinsing off the potatoes really well. Get the core out of there. All right. Get my breadboard. So, so far I'm at $3. With the chicken and the potato. I am going to peel these sweet potatoes, so you can watch me peel them. They're pretty fast to peel. Be right back. Okay, thanks, Jesus. Got a special guest here, Jesus H. Christ. You know, some people would think that's blasphemy, but I think that you're a uh, I think you're sincere about what you're trying to do here. You're trying to raise consciousness for uh, Jesus. I think this is great. You know, I'm sure everyone's been exposed to the, the word Jesus in the world. I don't think there's one person that hasn't been exposed to that word. Although there might be a couple of pygmies in the deep forest of Africa that have not heard of the word Jesus. If you walk up to them and say Jesus, they wouldn't even understand that. So maybe, maybe the work of the Christians is still, you know, to proselytize and tell people about Jesus. So I don't know. I'm not here to tell you what to say and what to, what not to say. I'm not here to force religion upon you, upon us, you. I'm not here to ask for, for money for a $54 million jet. In fact, as you know, I don't solicit funds at all for this effort to raise awareness for a third party because I made a vow of poverty when I was 18 years old and I've been living by that vow of poverty ever since. That means that I don't have to, I don't have to worry about material objects and money. The people that make tons of money censoring our show write uh, tweets all the time saying, thanks Dave for uh, my swimming pool and my new house overlooking the ocean. And, you know, that's illegal what they're doing, and they're going to be prosecuted and all serve jail time for what they're doing. But censoring me and doxing me is a completely illegal act, and they will be punished for it eventually. So they better hope I'm not successful in this effort. All right. What to do? Now, I picked up some amazing non-GMO vegetables made by Del Monte. You hear that jet in the background? I got to put up with that all day long, every day during the week. They have no GMO uh, ingredients in here. I don't know if you can see this. Del Monte is, is manufacturing these things. See that non-GMO? I, I, I bought a selection of things at Walmart today just to show you that these are available for 98 cents a can. Now, I'm not going to use these cans or any number of these cans today for the meal, but you could. You could easily add two of those cans to this dish and still make a nice meal. I am going to get a large onion. I have these organic onions here. That I'm, I've got the last onion. I'm going to cut it up. Yeah, the last onion. You know, I don't even need all the onion, but I'm going to use all of it just for flavoring. So use the use the whole onion. Absolutely. What I do is make a cut at the top, right here. Pull it all back. You can cut it at the bottom, but the bottom tends to have more of that uh, that smell, you know, that creates tears. 
that burning sensation you get in your eyes when you cut an onion, that's coming off the bottom. Some people cut an onion underwater. They cut the bottom off underwater just to keep that bottom from getting really in their face. That's where a lot of that theory stuff comes from. All right. Now, because I'm not going to use these cans, it would be kind of nice to have corn in this meal or French style green beans or peas and carrots, but I don't need that. But if you need something out of the cupboard, all you need is an old bag of potatoes, an onion, and these kind of vegetables, and your canned breast of chicken. Very affordable meal to make. Now, I've got the water boiling almost on level six. So what I'm going to do is chop up the uh, potatoes and get them in the hot water. So let's do that first. And these potatoes, like I said, the skin can remain on. I don't, I've got to make these about, about uh, no more than three quarters of an inch. Because I want them to cook pretty fast. And you can even cut them down because they're going in a hash. Nice. everyone's doing okay. Hello, Tsunami Rose. Welcome to the show. Uh, Sarah doesn't like to cook. I do the cooking around here. She likes to bake, and I really think that she's a great baker. So you can just drop the potatoes in the, uh, the water as you cut them. And you want to salt that water. I put a little salt in there. Just going to throw them in there in a boil. Now you can cook with frozen peas, frozen frozen beans, you can cook with frozen anything. But and you can rehydrate that with the hot water off of these potatoes. So if you are pulling stuff out of the freezer, you can certainly do that. Now this is more than enough for five people this dinner. But I said five people because, you know, some people are really big eaters and can't, you know, they have to have second helping, blah, blah, blah. All right, I'm gonna put those in the uh, boiling water and leave the cover off for now, because it's literally at the top, level six. Actually, I'll leave it on there just slightly. Okay, what do we have here? Time for a cup of coffee. You know, I went out to a coffee uh, place today in my area, and it wasn't Starbucks. And I, I got a, a, a triple uh, Americano 16-ouncer. Hey, thank you, Daryl. Appreciate it. And I don't know what's wrong with this company. They're making money hand over fist in my area, but their coffee is so weak, it's not even funny. And I compare it to Starbucks, and I'm going, Starbucks is so much stronger and better. You know, I have a great here. What are you talking about? Is that, do you want to be muted? Oh, okay. You just got muted there, buddy. That's a 15-minute wait time. Yeah. I'm criticizing my hair is a bannable offense in this show. I have hair, unlike some people who don't. Just so you know, thank you. Glacier water from Norway is $7 for a 30, 30, one third of a liter. That's insane, Greek God. And I'll bet you it comes in a plastic bottle too, which has microplastic in it. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? So they're charging you for the microplastic. There's 300 parts of little teeny, it's no, a glass bottle. Okay. Well, if it's in a plastic bottle, it's insane. All right. You're buying a health fryer tomorrow and a sandwich toaster? Wow. That's kind of like a George Foreman grill and a sandwich toaster. That looks good. You know, I bought some glacier water recently, uh, and I, I have a collection of water, actually. And it's in plastic. And I got to tell you, I, I'm not going to drink it until I'm desperate and I'm reaching the end of the rope of apocalypse. I, I figure I'm not going to drink plastic waste, even though I have really nice glacier water. Icelandic glacier water. Yeah, I mean, it just plastic waste is kind of bumming me up. All right. 
Alrighty, then you have another wait time coming to you because you, you didn't come in as a real person. You came in as a troll. Well, I don't know. It's great stuff. You know, when I when Glacier Water first came out, and I should get going on this dinner. I'm cooking the potatoes right now on a Aurora boil. That's about it. Uh, let me start the pan. Hang on. So today, instead of those cans of uh, non-GMO Del Monte vegetables, I'm going to just slice up an onion and some celery, which I need to use up, some organic celery I have here from Safeway. Safeway's uh, pretty good. They make some great organic food now. And uh, I got to tell you, I was, I was the first guy to introduce organics to Safeway back in the day, back in 1985. Just use about three stalks of the celery because, you know, you can always use celery for, uh, for chicken salad or tuna salad, whatever. Celery's great. Three stalks for flavor. Uh, it has salt in it, celery does. So... It, with the onions, it kind of creates a basis for a, a nice stir fry. And you can cut all the tops uh, off. Uh, I save as much of the top as I can possibly use. Okay, so we're going to do a basic cut here for the celery. There you go. Keeping your fingers down. Use a nice sharp knife. And you don't want to get those end pieces. They have a little rust on them. Yeah, you don't want to cook with end pieces. Thank you. And we'll do the onion too while we're at it. Cut off the bottom there. Bottom. There's one half of an onion cut. Another half of an onion cut. I bet you've never seen anybody cut vegetables as fast as I cut vegetables, huh? I'm very proficient at my, my cutting technique. All right. Freeze what veggies you don't use and make stock when you get a, a, a big, huge a bone. Good point. Yeah. You know, I'm going to try the slow bone movement where you cook a bone for 16 hours. I just don't have one of those crock pots, you know, I, and I don't want to turn a flame on for 16 hours. I didn't see Bill Maher's racist slurs. I can't wait to find those. Not that I'm in any way wanting to see racist slurs, but it troubles me when Jews make, make fun of, of other people, because they, as you know, they, they've been made fun of for centuries, and now they're, they're engaged in racism. Bill Maher is Jewish. You watch me cooking in bed? Really? That's nice. That's a special thing. Yeah, cheap-ass meals. Yeah, with hardly anything in the cupboard. Most of the things that I, I cook with, you, know, you can pull out of a cupboard, except for the, the old potatoes and the onion. I have uh, no. Nah, you know, I don't like wasting energy, so I didn't, I didn't buy the big slow roasters. I do need a slow cooker, a crock pot, but I can't make a meal in... 45 minutes with a crock pot. Low energy cast? No, that's BS, okay? No. David, do you think it was racist? Well, what he said, I don't know. I have to actually hear what he said, Delvin. I don't know what he racist statements he said to see if it was racist. I thought the statement that uh, Roseanne made about George Soros being a Nazi was not racist at all. I agree with her. George Soros is a Nazi. He, sm he smiles and laughs about the time he spent with his, uh... oh, I got to boil over. Okay. He spent time with his, uh, his godfather. I, I guess it wasn't his uncle, but it was his godfather. All righty then. Y you got banned. Good for you. Pulling the Jews gold teeth out of their, their mouth. Now he laughed and smiled about it. It was one of the best times of his life. Even though he was himself was a Hungarian Jew, his godfather was one of those Jews that, you know, basically did the work for the Nazi. So yeah, he was a Nazi. He didn't take the side of the poor downtrodden ethnic minorities. He is evil. I think we should have a law just created for Soros. Call it the Soros law. 
it's like one it's akin to treason you know where you try to create mob rule start protest rallies in america to try to destabilize our country hello scissor fight welcome to the show the 60 minute interview was scary and thank you for giving me that tsunami we we got a a link to the band video of soros and it was scary how he smiled and smirked about all, all the times he spent where looking at the dead Jews having their gold teeth pulled out of their, their head. Yeah, I think Trump should make a law against Soros committing treason like he's trying to do. Okay, so we got a big boil going back here. I'm just boiling the hell out of these potatoes. I'm gonna turn this burner back here in the back here on level three. I've got big burners in here on both sides. Now I have a green, uh, I have a lipstick pepper I included. I got this for 50 cents. Now remember I have $2 to spend on these vegetables. So I got this lipstick pepper, really nice red pepper for 50 cents. Now you can get those on sale two for one right now in our, on our West Coast here in Washington. It is made in Mexico, but it's ready to eat. I've got those yams, which are nominal. I included, uh, I'm going to say 25 cents for those. 25 cents for some carrots. I get these mega bags of carrots, organic, pre-peeled. Pre I'm just going to grab a, a handful of these guys. Nominal. And the celery is nominal. I'm going to say a dollar for the vegetables there. But I am going to add a 50 cent can of Hunt's Organic I picked up at the dollar store. It's amazing product, non-GMO. 50 cents I got these at the dollar store. Hunt's is making these. Really good product, really good quality. So again, you can replace all these vegetables here with cans of Del Monte non-GMO. If you're catching our show a little late, Del Monte sells these non-GMO cans which are really, really great. Peas and carrots. Put them in the cupboard for survival. French style, non-GMO cut bean. Whole kernel corn, non-GMO. It's important to get non-GMO with corn because the genetically modified corn has got all kinds of dangerous things in it that can cause sterility, like epicyte, E-P-I-C-Y-T-E. For those of you who bother to look things up, good luck with that. Yeah, here I paid three bucks for what I thought was really good coffee, and it's just so weak, it's not even funny. How they, how they make money, I don't know. I'm not going back there for more coffee. No way. I'd rather go to Starbucks. You know, you don't have to buy anything at Starbucks now. You can just hang out. Yeah, just ask. You got Echo? Just ask for a, uh, yeah, just ask for a cup of hot water and bring a packet of, of, of dried coffee or something to hang out. I'm making a veggie chicken stew with a $2.50 can of breast of chicken here. I, I got this for $2 because I buy them in bulk, but. Whoa. You know, I'm going to pour some of that water off the top. It's, da it's dangerous to have water, by the way, boiling like that. Got a little too much in there. Now, this is a really important uh, lesson. If you are cooking hot water on the stove and you've got one of these things with a handle and you've got kids, do not put the handle there. Put the handle back there because the kids, this happened to an eight-year-old uh, when I was eight years old in my neighborhood. He grabbed the handle and it went right on top of him and he had, you know, third degree burns all over his body. First degree burns, second degree burns. Uh, I don't know where it's made. Let me take a look. Hang on. Product of the USA. Right there. Product of the USA. Okay, I'm getting that pan in the back cooking, uh, level three. You know, spray it with some olive oil. Put about two teaspoons or maybe maybe even 
two tablespoons of uh, of olive oil down. I'm gonna pour it in there. Yeah, you want to get a nice glaze on that pan and get it hot before you start putting some of your vegetables in. Okay, here we are with our vegetables. I'm going to kind of slice these uh, carrots up so that they're a little smaller, easier to cook on the stove, more bite side. Carrots make a nice sweet element to the stew. And you'll be surprised, they'll add a flavor to the onions and the yam and the celery. The yams or the sweet potatoes are, are very good. They're full of vitamins. And I'm gonna go ahead and dice those up uh, a little thinner than I made the potatoes. And I'm gonna pan fry these. I'm going to turn that level down to three on the back burner here. Those potatoes are cooking pretty fast. And I'm going to take these uh, potatoes and just set them down, these sweet potatoes. Just set them down on the pan directly with the carrot. Now, this is one of those meals where I put the onions in at the after I cook these yams. So now I'm going to turn these yams. I'm going, to, I'm going to push them around with my hand, kind of like glaze them with a little bit of oil. Okay, I'm going to throw on top of those, I'm going to, I'm just going to cover it. But I have something else I want to cook too. Since I have an extra dollar to spare, I'm going to, I'm going to add my cauliflower to this dish. Okay, hang on. I've got some cauliflower that I, that's pretty much, you know, still fresh, but I, I should eat it. And it's very good when it's added to this meal. That's non-carbohydrate vegetable. But you can see there's a little bit of browning right here. See that? You can't even see it. It's just right there. Just cut that off. Shave that off, put that in the compost. Then take your, uh, because this cauliflower takes a little longer, I'm going I'm to slice it up and put it right on top of the yam. Okay. Or the sweet potato. All right. Now I'm still getting that pan hot back there. And what I'm going to do is my, my, my goal is to create a steam fry here. So what I'm going to do is, you see this right here? This is edible. All of this is edible. You can chop that up. It's got a lot of vitamins in it. Slice it up and dice it up. Just crisscross the cut right there. All right. Now that pan is getting a little hot. I'm going to turn it up to level six and back. Right there. And I'm going to add a little water. Cover it up and start that heating process, which is a really fast heat. Now, I have not put my celery, I'm gonna put those cauliflowers, those stubs in there, because they take a little longer, they're like carrots. I'm gonna take some of my favorite uh, seasoning, which I use in a lot of my meals, and that's the Italian seasoning. Welcome, everybody. Cauliflower. Uh, cauliflower is a cruciferous vegetable. Like Brussels sprouts and broccoli, it makes a, uh, a very nice, uh, it's anti-carcinogenic. It forms a cross at the base. And nutritionists have analyzed this cross, and somehow it, it adds to uh, your body's defenses. It builds up your immune system. So broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts are really good. They're cruciferous. All right, I think you'll never forget that. I said it twice. Okay. You've got a video of a, of a certain 
Heinz makes spotted dick sponge pudding. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, little known pieces of trivia there on Heinz. Spotted dick. I never saw that before. Thanks for sharing. Heinz, spotted dick, sponge. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Cruciferous. Yes, you got the spelling correct, Shelley. All right, I think I think we're getting close to uh, being cooked back there on the potatoes. Let me let me take a little knife and poke those. A nice little sharp knife. Okay, now if you cover it up and let it cook in its own heat, it's very much uh, full boil down to just a simmer. Because I'm timing everything to kind of mix it all together. Okay. Composting and cleaning up as you cook is part of the deal. So you can see I've got garbage here. Right. That's just waste. So we have a compost bin, which we keep underneath the sink. Word compost, see that? And it's very dirty, the compost bin is, so you don't want to get your hands in it. But when you lift it, you can actually just dump stuff in it. So I'm just going to lift it and dump stuff in it. And of course, you cannot recycle plastic. And this is a tragedy, really. This stuff should be recyclable. All these plastic bags should have a certain cornstarch in them so they could biodegrade. But so far, nothing has been done to develop this. Those particular bags are not recyclable and not in any way helpful. All right, then I'm gonna lift this up and throw all the other waste from the peelings of the sweet potato and the outer sprouts of the new potatoes or red potatoes. Red potatoes are called new potatoes in some areas on the East Coast. They don't even know what red potatoes are. I mean, on the East Coast, it's new potatoes and on the West Coast, it's red potatoes, or at least it was many years ago. Target stores recycle uh, these plastic bags. But I suppose you can throw the other plastic bags in there with them. Yeah, go for it. I'm glad that some stores recycle them because you know, it's very important. Okay. All right, I'm getting close to uh, giving this a stir. You don't want to let this burn, so you want to give this pan a shake. And then grab a spatula and give it a move, move it up. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's do the Italian seasoning now. I've got it right here. This stuff I buy in bulk. I got this for $3.99, so I, I buy it in bulk. I highly recommend that. I buy all my herbs in bulk because I use a lot of them. Okay, let's go ahead and throw this on here. I'm going to put a whole teaspoon of Italian seasoning on this. Level teaspoon. And I just kind of throw it in there. I measure it later in my mind. Ah, I'll have some more of this weak coffee here. As you know, these these dinners are timed out perfectly. So by the time the show starts, I'm pretty much ready to go. So now I'm going to take my onions, and since I've pre-cooked my carrots and my uh, sweet potatoes in this container, I'm going to take my onions and my celery and put that on top. Kind of smother it. Now remember, I didn't put a lot of water in there, so this stuff is steam frying, which is a kind of a technique I've used over the years to, to quick cook things. When you get that water in there with the oil, it, it kind of does a fusion thing. All right, I'm, I'm glad you feel that way, but I'm not in any way interested in, in you or anyone for that matter, right? Yeah. Cooking doesn't turn me on. That's just the, the reality. It's a relaxing event that, that I just, I can't even imagine 
having uh, sex in the kitchen with video cameras rolling. I, I just can't. Now, Daryl, you're getting echo. I'm not getting echo. Does anybody else get echo on our show? Echo, echo. Daryl, I think there's something wrong with your computer. Hmm. Hello? I don't have anything. All right. Audio is fine here. Okay, great. So some of you are really uh, into food. I can see that. I have uh, I have concerns that some of you are ac actually having sex with your food. No, I don't know anybody, anybody that by, by that name. I've never met anybody by that name. All right. I'm gonna turn the water off back here. It's done. Yeah, that 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 flame can go off now. And I'm I'm gonna cook this. I'm gonna cut this uh, red pepper here. And because red peppers really are all about flavor, it goes in toward the end of the dinner. And of course, I don't want the seed ball, so I pull that out. And one way to get rid of the seeds is just to kind of go like that. They drop right out. Okay. Okay. Don't want seeds. Okay, it's important right now to actually open a couple cans before I do the red pepper thing, and you don't want to cut that up and put it in your dinner. That could be a, I'm eating a label. Somebody get really pissed off about it, you know. And give it another quick rinse because this is coming out of Mexico. Pesticide Central. All right. I'm going to open these cans of tomatoes here. Now, this tomato, these diced tomatoes make an organic diced tomatoes make a really interesting fusion with the uh, with the chicken paste and the potatoes. I normally wouldn't think it would be good, but it is. Now, in this particular instance, I'm going to use all of the uh, flavoring from the chicken itself. So, see all that juice in there? Throw it right into the uh, container. Just throw the whole thing in. There you go. Push it down and push those onions down with it. Got to crush it. Now, again, the temperature is still at level six. So I'm hard cooking this really fast. Let me rinse this pan off. This uh, dish off. Yeah, you, you use all of that flavoring that goes into this. This stuff was steamed and it has broth in it. And it's just got a lot of flavor. So it's gonna make your meal taste better. So anyway, I made this, this meal for all these people, Sarah's relatives, and they loved it. It's like, wow, that was great. So that's, that's why I decided to do this tonight, because this is like right out of the cupboard. I had nothing to cook. I had nothing prepared. We kind of had a, an impromptu visit from her family. And uh, well, well I, I turned out a great meal. Thanks, Topic. That's very sweet of you. Uh, you do a little rosemary. He drops a scalp. Yeah. Are you trying to grow your hair with rosemary? They say it helps. Rosemary, I, I make a tea out of rosemary. Yeah, I, I, I wildcraft my own rosemary. In fact, it makes a great herb. I'm letting this dry right now because its destination is this jar, this empty jar. As you can see, I need some more. And, you know, I just put these in a bag, open bag, and let it dry. That way they can breathe. But rosemary is uh, really good with potatoes. But I'm doing Italian seasoning with this dish. It just comes out better than rosemary for some reason. It's rosemary. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut these red peppers down to size.
And I just take them like that and then slice them this way. Nice big chunk. You don't want to have two small pieces. These are like half inch pieces. Because that way everyone gets a nice big chunk of pepper. And they're not going to be cooked very long on the stove. And you can pop the center out right there. Pull all those seeds out. Okay. And just take the whole plate and put it right in on top of your entire meal. Okay. Take your spatula and give it a little movement. Kind of stab it with a spatula. Very nice. Then take your can of tomatoes and pour that on top. These are organic tomatoes I got at the dollar store for 50 cents a can. Put it right on top of there. Okay. Now turn your flame down to level three. Now I guarantee everything at the bottom of that pan is cooked. Your sweet potatoes are cooked. Your cauliflower is cooked. And your potatoes are in another container in the water, in the back. And they're cooked too. Isn't that amazing? Almost everything is now slowly steaming on this burner right here. That burner is shut off completely. That's off. This is on. Now I get my container that I just made uh, spaghetti in. And I have a, uh, another container I'm going to downsize into. Because this is my spaghetti dinner I made the other night. And it's really time to, you know, make use of this big bowl for all this food. So I'm just going to put this container spaghetti in here. Because I really like this particular bowl. Now with old spaghetti, you know, I, I know I'm not making spaghetti here, but uh, with older spaghetti, I wanted to show you a little trick. I guess some of you got a view of my feet down there. Um, I take a little bit of the uh, salsa and pour it on top just before I, I put it away in the refrigerator. It's actually a pretty good way of flavoring your, your spaghetti. And I need to use the salsa up. All right. That goes in the refrigerator for some other meal. Meanwhile, I've got to clean this container out. So, Normally I would have prepared for this, but I realized, oh wow, I really need that container and it's in the refrigerator. So wouldn't it be nice if I could just transfer it? And that other container is more microwavable, so I could actually cook right out of it. No, we're not making spaghetti tonight. All right. Nice clean spaghetti container is no longer got spaghetti in it and now I'm going to go ahead and put this stuff that I'm grabbing right here into the compost bin because one thing I can't stand is having to clean up in the middle of the show coming in here and having to clean up when I just want to start the show and you know do that not come in here and clean up so 
I'm going to just shuffle that compost into my compost bin right here. Okay, I'm done. See how efficient that was? Thank you, Scissor Fight, for purging that bastard. What a jerk. All right, so you're probably wondering what's going on. I mean, when am I going to get this dinner cooked and ready? Mm hmm. I do cook and clean, yes. It's not a woman's job, it's, it's anybody who wants to do its job. I don't define myself by my male roles in this world. Sarah likes to work. She likes to make money. I don't really, I'm not into money. Never really was. Because I have enough, of course. Thank you. Yeah, it's not done yet. It's just an empty bowl. Okay, now one of my big flavor enhancement tools uh, for this dish would be uh, topping it off with pepper, uh, paprika, parmesan. The three Ps. Pepper, paprika, parmesan. Sarah made a, uh, <laughs> she's growing a lot of vegetables, so she made a salad dressing, and she used all this oil right here. See this? And I explained to her, this, this portion right here has to be smaller. You need about that much oil, and the rest vinegar and herbs. And she went with too much oil, so we're going to use this oil in cooking, I think. But it was, isn't that sweet? She made herself a little vinaigrette. But it's got too much oil in it. It's just top quality organic olive oil. So I didn't want to waste it. So I'm going to use this for cooking in the future. But uh, we can always build on that dressing idea of hers. I think once we get the right ingredients, she'll figure out how to make dressing. <sighs> yeah, you could deep fry shrimp in that. It's got uh, thyme and oregano in it. And chives. She put chives, oregano, and, ch and thyme. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and wine. Okay. Isn't it a great idea, but too much oil, I told her. You get one-third oil, two-thirds vinegar. Okay, I've got some things to put together here for this mega meal. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bump this up to 10 meals. Yeah. Because I honestly don't think five people could eat all this food. I'm going to take it to eight meals, okay? I think ten's a bit ridiculous. We'll do eight meals, all right? Yeah. No, it's actually, they get paid to do this, says their fight. It's not jealousy. I, I know you don't believe it, but Mark made millions of dollars spent completely censoring me. I know you're having a hard time believing that. Millions of dollars. 38 million in the past five years. And he's given a lot of it to these cronies. They come in here and they make a lot of money. I'm just telling you. You, you may not believe what they're saying, but yeah, they admitted it. They posted it. They're, they're making tons of money on, on stopping me or trying to stop me. Can you battle a Peruvian chef? I don't know. I'm not really into battling people. I know. Yeah. Maybe Trump will stop buying fish burgers at McDonald's. $38 million, not billion. $38 million. Yeah. In, in five years, he made $38 million. And he give, gave a lot to United American, Lot Lizard, T. Rucker. They made a lot of money. Okay, I've got five minutes to put the ingredients together and get in the show and start our regular show. So let's do it. Okay, turning off all flames. Taking these potatoes right here which are filled with hot water. I'm going to go ahead and dump the water out. You could use them to, to cook vegetables, like frozen vegetables if you want. Okay, they are done. One way to see if they're done is that they flake off. 
Oh, flake off. Take it and go like that. Yep. Perfect. Okay. You got a bed of new potatoes. You take your, your cooked vegetables right here. And you put them on top of your potatoes to start shoveling them in there. Okay, all, the, all the vegetables go on top. All right. Every last drop. All the juices go down into the potatoes. Then take your Parmesan and put it on top of this dish like that. Now everything is steaming, really steaming. Put a little paprika on there. Not too much. And then take and go like this, right down into the dish. That kind of breaks everything up a little bit more. Pushes your chicken around. Okay. Take some more Parmesan and put it on top. Put a little pepper on top. A little more paprika on top. Okay, I think I'm going to take this up to 10 people. And then take your plate and cover it up. Nice clean plate, cover it right up. And dinner is served. Here we go. Let me change my thing to 10 meals. Yeah, that's huge. I've never had a, an eight meal in that size container. So I'm going to go to 10 meals. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for this exciting way of cooking on the fly with food out of your cupboard and ready to go bad. <laughs> Those potatoes are ready to plant. And if you have potatoes that are sprouting, you can still eat them right before the end. Assuming they're not turning green. Yeah, it'd be great. And you can actually mix eggs into this dish while it's cooking if you like eggs. I'm not allowed to cook with eggs except to make eggs for Sarah. She wants to always avoid eggs. Uh, she's just got a thing about them. I did make her some eggs uh, last week with our amazing ranchos, huevos rancheros, which she did eat. Uh, crock pots take too much time for me. I'm a one hour cooker. I mean, I, I made this in 50 minutes. So the dinner is done. It's in this container. It's very attractive. It has a lot of flavorful colors. And one of the things you can add, like I said, you can add any of these kinds of, you know, cans you buy at the store. These are already pre-cooked. Peas and carrots are great. You can put frozen peas in this mix. It makes kind of a bangers and mash without the bangers. It's very good. But yeah, we're talking about a full meal. Look at that. All right. Thank you, everyone. We'll be uh, uploading this tonight around 2 in the morning. In the meantime, I'm going to go into the other room, and you can start the show in about a minute and a half. Take care.